Hi, and welcome to another video where today we're going to be taking a look at the process of modeling using images as reference planes. I have here open 3ds Max, and we're going to be creating a garbage dumpster using reference images that I have that look like this. Here, we are looking at the front image, or rear of this image, in silhouette. I also have the side image, and this could be either the left or the right. These images have been pre-prepared and are going to be brought into 3ds Max to use as reference to create our model. To begin with, we need to know exactly what size our images are. Entering the properties allows me to go and see that these images are both 1280 by 720. This is going to mean that I can create an image plane that matches this pixel ratio so that we don't get any distortion on our image. Distortion in the reference image will lead to distortion in the 3D model, something we would like to avoid. I will begin by creating a reference plane in my front view. So I will find my front viewport and drag out a plane. Here, there are a couple of things that I would like to change. First, I will set both the width and height to match the proportions of the image. I also don't need any of the edges that exist here subdividing this plane into 16 quads. The color is also a little irritating. I will switch it to be something a little bit more neutral and then remove the edges. This image is now ready or this plane is now ready to accept our image. To place the image on the plane, I'm going to go and drag my Windows Explorer so that it sits in front of 3ds Max. While in front of 3ds Max, I find my image and drag it onto the plane. Now it is important when I do this that I can see the color of my geometry and that I am not in wireframe. If I'm in wireframe, like so, and I were to go and try and drag my reference plane into the scene, it will attempt to add it as a background. That is not what we're after. We want this to be applied as a texture. So, I'm making sure that I can see the color of my geometry before dragging the image in. Now that our image is on our plane, we need to align it to the world a little bit better. This is going to make the process of 3D modeling a little bit easier and allow us to use the symmetry modifier to great effect. First, the ground plane acts as the ground and our dumpster is half submerged in it. So, using the move tool, I will drag up the reference plane until its wheels apply are aligned with the zero mark. Now I can't see the grid in front of my plane because my plane is at the zero mark. So if I drag it back behind 0 and Y, I'll see the grid. Anywhere in front of 0 Y means we won't see the grid. With it behind the grid, I can now move this up until the wheels appear to be on that ground plane. There. That works pretty well. The next thing that I want to do is line up the left and right sides of this so that it too matches the center. Now luckily, between the lids, we can see a little daylight here, and I'm going to use that little white square as a means of lining this up. Now if you're applying textures in 3ds Max for the first time, there is going to be a little bit of an issue with the resolution. My 3ds Max is already set up to work the right way here, but in case yours is not, let's go through the settings that are going to affect the resolution of the images. There are two settings that by default Max has as a performance benefit. The first, we're going to go into our little plus and down to our configure viewports. We're going to go into the performance and we are going to change the resolution of all three texture settings to be 2048. This will prevent Max from cropping images or scaling them down to improve performance. With that done, we should see a little clearer our image. 
The other setting that we can do is a material setting. This will apply directly to the plane and not to the viewport. To do this, all I need to do is go find the material editor icon from the top. It is a little tiny sphere with a checkerboard on it. You can also hit M on your keyboard in order to open up this menu. Once it is loaded, we will see the material editor on screen. Max has two layouts for the material editor. Typically, by default, you're going to see the slate material editor, which looks like this. I prefer to use the compact mode, so switching over to compact mode will give us this layout. This is a little bit of an older layout, but I do prefer it. Finally, all of our materials that we see here are blank and aren't the one that's on the plane that we created by dragging our image into the scene. To fix this, I'm going to use the little eyedropper tool on an empty material. When I click on the plane, it'll assign a material to the slot that matches what's on the plane. Now, I have settings in Material Editor that match what's in the scene. If we scroll down, we will find that in our images, there is a image in the base color. This is the texture that we assigned. Up in the top of the settings, there is a little blue and white sphere that if you click and hold, you can assign a realistic material. This too will create a higher resolution of your image. Again, in my 3ds Max, we're not going to see much difference here because I've already gone and reconfigured these. But if you're using this for the first time, this may help you see things a little clearer. Now that we have our plane set up, I would like to make sure that it's a little bit easier to replace it if we ever accidentally move it. To do this, I'm going to head to the Hierarchy panel. I'm going to go to Adjust Pivot Only. And using the Type in Transforms in the center bottom of the screen, I will zero out its pivot point. Now, if inadvertently I were to move it while modeling, I could always go and zero out these numbers to return it to the center of the screen. With that done, this image is good to go, and we can go and create the side. First, I'll turn on my angle snaps and holding shift, I will go in, drag a copy over to the side, ensuring that it snaps to 90 degrees. I'm going to ensure that it is a copy and I will hit OK. Now, we can go and grab our folder, drag our side image on, and now both reference planes are good to go. They both have their pivot at the center, so that if I were to accidentally move either one, it's going to be a lot easier to replace them while I'm moving. The next thing we want to do is ensure that we can't accidentally move them. To do this, select both planes and enter your object properties. I'm going to turn on freeze, which is going to prevent them from moving or being selected. But a default in 3ds Max is going to make our images disappear. So I'm going to turn off the default Show Frozen in Gray. This is going to ensure that we can still see our texture while we're now working in our scene. And as you can see, I can't select my planes anymore. With that, we're ready to go and start creating our dumpster. The dumpster is made up of separate elements. The dumpster body itself, the wheel assembly, the lid, the handles, there are quite a few components. Since the dumpster body itself is the main object and the components are attached to it, that's where we're going to begin. Since it is box-like, we'll create a box. I'm going to do this in the perspective view and just get it roughly about the size of half the dumpster. In my front view, I will go and line this up a little bit more accurately to the image. Now we can't see through it, so hitting Alt-X on the keyboard is going to enter X-ray mode. This will allow us to see through the geometry to the reference image behind. We can now convert to an editable poly and using the vertices, go and align this a little bit closer to the image. Now the center vertices need to be snapped to the world, so I'll use the type and transform to zero them out. Again, this is going to ensure that our symmetrical copying works 
as expected. With that done, we can go and move the bottom up until it matches. We can move the right side in until it matches. And we can also move the top up roughly where it goes. We can't see too well from the front. Next, we'll head over to our left side and we'll see that the reference plane is in the way. So I'm going to use the viewport selector and drop into the right side. Here, we can align the back, the front, and then also better align the top. I'll align the front vertex until it matches the bottom of the lip and then drag the rear vertex up until it too matches the bottom lip of the lid. With that done, we've got pretty close to the shape of this thing already set up. Next, I'll select the top face and I'm going to bevel to create the lip. I'm going to remove the height and just use the offset to create an extrusion. Now, if you can't see it, you can add a little bit of height here so you can see how far it goes. But I'm going to go back to zero when I accept it. I'm going to use plus here since we also want to try and create the height. So now, with that done, we can go and increase the height, but we can see here that the height is going at an angle, and the actual lip just goes straight up. No matter what we do with the size of this extrusion, it is always going to go on an angle and thus never match up with our shape. So, what we'll do instead is we will zero out the extrusion. Then, hitting OK, we can switch to the Move tool and simply move this up until it matches the shape. An extrusion of zero is still an extrusion. If we look at this from our perspective viewport, we can see that things are going fairly well. Next, we want to create the inside of the dumpster. In the top view, I will begin by insetting. And this is a little bit easier to see in wireframe, so I'm going to switch. And I want to make sure that the inset is large enough that it goes past the outside edge of the dumpster. This is going to ensure that the inside is smaller than the outside and that they don't pass through one another. When I'm happy with the width, I'll hit OK. And now we've got our inset. We can then return to create the inside by doing an extrusion also at zero. Using the Move tool, I can move it straight down. And then we can remove the angle that exists by clicking on the Make Planar in Z button. Then I just need to adjust this until the thickness is about right. That matches the rest of the dumpster. Our dumpster looks correct with the exception of the fact that it's only half the width. So we want to go and add some more of the rest of this. To do that, I'm going to find a piece of geometry that lies along the center axes. In this case, we actually have that in the side of the dumpster. There is a face along its left side that lines up perfectly with the zero axis in X. That's this face here. So I will go and select that face. And with it selected, I'm going to apply a modifier by the name of symmetry. When you apply a symmetry modifier with a selection, it uses the selection as the starting point for your mirror. Now here, the default is in Z. So our box is being mirrored up and down, and we can see right through it. That's not what we want. So I'll turn off the Z, and I'll mirror it in X. This is going to create the other side of the dumpster. Now it looks mostly correct here, but there's still a little bit of geometry in the center that shouldn't be there. This should be one wide opening. This geometry was created by the fact that our single-sided has geometry that was there before we created it. So, selecting that geometry, I will move it to the left on the other side of the mirror. When I return to the symmetry modifier, because it's on that side of the mirror, the mirror can't see it and it's not recreated. This gives us now a much better looking box. 
To accept the changes, I'll convert it to an editable poly, and I will remove the edge created by the symmetry process. Here, holding the control button, and hitting remove. This will ensure that the edge and the vertices are removed from the dumpster. The next thing we're going to do is create the bumpers, and there are several bumpers on this. Two in the front and one in the rear. We're going to need to create several edges to help create these. To do this, I'm going to go to my perspective viewport and select an edge. I'll hit ring to make that edge go all the way around the dumpster. And then I'm going to use the connect button to create an edge. Now from the front, this edge looks perfectly straight. But from the side, the edge is on an angle. And this is because connect averages out the distance between vertices. So because the top is angled, so is the middle. I will use my make planar button in Z again and line this up to the top of the front and bottom. And then I will do the same process again, selecting an edge, hitting ring, hitting connect. And this one is already straight, so we just need to line it up. This is now the bottom of the top bumper. And we can select again, hit ring again, connect again, and we now have the top of the bottom bumper. At this point, we are ready to extrude the bumpers. I will select the two polygons in the front and the three polygons in the back that create these bumpers. This is a simple extrusion, so I will extrude with my settings on and adjust the thickness until it matches somewhat the image. At this point, it looks pretty good, but we've still got some wasted topology here. These vertices do not contribute to the shape of the model, and if I move them, you can see the model stays put. Now these ones are needed, but the ones in the back are not. So we're going to go and clean them up. I'm going to do this by scaling them together until they are planar, and then I'm going to move them down until they're fairly close to the bottom. Now there are eight vertices selected, and if I hit weld because they are on top of each other, we'll get down to four. Then using target weld, I will drop them down and bring the front one back. This will reduce our total number of vertices and leave us only with the vertices that are manipulating the shape of our dumpster. Okay, let's look and uh, see what we can do about this handle here. So I'm going to select a vertex along the side. This is where I want the handle to be uh, connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy its X position. This is going to allow us to snap that handle directly to that same position. So with that copied into my clipboard, I'll return to the creation panel and create a box. I'll draw the box like so, and then instantly convert it to an editable poly. Once that's done, I can select the vertices here and we'll use what's in our clipboard to go and paste them. So they're now right um, against the, the dumpster here, pretty flush. Next in the front, we'll move these forward. We'll select the back and move them to the rear. And now we can concentrate on making the shape a little bit more accurate. So we'll start by thinning it out a little bit. And then we're going to go and bevel these corners. I'm going to do this with a chamfer. I'm going to start by selecting and deselecting the edges. And this is going to speed up my process here. So I select and then using Alt deselect. And then I go and create the chamfer. Now this is a little rounder than I want. So I'll remove the segment. And there, that seems to match pretty well. Next, I'll select the faces in both the front and back. I'm going to create an inset to give me the thickness. So I'll go to inset settings. And we'll adjust our value here until this matches pretty close to what we want. And then I'll hit OK. That's pretty good there. So I'll hit OK. And then with this done, we can do a bridge. And that's going to make those polygons meet in the middle and seal off the inside. So we've now got a closed mesh again. With that done, we've kind of fixed this all up. And we can go add the fins. So to do this, I'm going to select all the way through. And we'll go and create 
some connections here. Now there are three fins, one at the rear, one in the middle, and one at the front. So I'm going to go to Connect, Settings. We'll increase the number until it matches the number of fins. And then I'm going to use the Pinch setting, and I'm going to drag it up to separate them a little bit. With that done, I can hit OK. And now what we need to do is we actually need to split these. We can't extrude our polygons yet, so I'm going to chamfer them and just set the setting here until they're about as thick as I want the fins to be. Well, something in that range looks pretty okay. With that done, we can go into polygon selection mode and select the three top polygons where the fins are going to be, and then add to that the three bottom polygons. Next, we just need to extrude them to match what's in the image. So we'll go to extrude settings, switch over to our front view so we can better see how these line up. Maybe we'll switch to X-ray mode and we'll drag this down somewhere about here. That's going to match the image pretty well. Now we need to go from square fins to triangular fins. So I need to remove an edge from each fin. Now this typically takes a long time to go and select it on each fin. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a selection trick here. I'm going to do this in the front and I'm going to go to edges and I'll select a corner and then using alt, I'll deselect the horizontal and vertical edges, leaving then only the three edges I want to have removed. So there's three of them there. So we'll do the same thing here. We're going to select, Alt select to remove, and I now have six. So what we can do now is just hold control and hit remove, and that'll remove the edge as, long, as well as the vertices selected to it. And we now have some rectangular fins or triangular fins. Next, we need to go and clean this up here. So we can go and select these edges. We'll go in and collapse them down. I'm using my shortcut here to collapse. This is going to uh, speed us up a little bit. Here's the collapse button here. So we now have a singular edge holding that up. Now this edge is not contributing to the shape, but it's a necessary evil. Now I also noticed that inside here, when I was creating my fins, I inadvertently created some internal edges. These actually don't do anything. So I'm gonna select them all. And then holding control, I'm going to hit remove in order to get rid of them and their vertices. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's see how we're doing here. This looks pretty good. I think the only thing left to do is remove the faces that lie alongside the dumpster. There are 13 of them here. So we're going to go in and we'll select all of these. There we go. And with those 13 selected, I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard. And that's going to get rid of them completely. Now this hole could be a problem, but the fact that this handle is flush against the dumpster means that uh, it's not actually going to be a problem. So the next thing that I wanna do is I would like to symmetry this over to create the handle on the other side. To do that, I'm going to affect my pivot point here so that it makes the process of adding the symmetry a little bit easier. I want it to be in the center of the world. So we're gonna to go to our hierarchy panel once again. We're gonna go into effect pivot only once again. And in the bottom again, I'm going to zero out the X. With that done, we can return back to the modifier panel. And we can now apply our symmetry modifier to mirror this over. So we're gonna drop down, scroll down to the bottom where it says symmetry. And we're gonna pick and choose the right axis here until it lines up with where it's supposed to go. And when we're happy with that, we're going to convert this to an editable poly, accepting our changes. Beautiful. So there are now the handles done. We've now got uh, just a couple more pieces here we're going to have to build. We're going to have to make the wheel assembly, and we're going to have to make the lid assembly. So let's start with the wheels here. Now, when I look at this, I see that there are three holes and three spokes that make up this wheel. That means that I need the wheel to be a multiple of three. There's also some kind of a bracket and box up here holding it together. If we switch over to the front view and go take a look, we can see that that bracket is somewhat of a fork that goes around the wheel. We can see uh, that there's an axle down the middle of the wheel here. Uh, and we also have a cylinder and a box up top that kind of hold it to the dumpster body itself. So that's gonna be kind of uh, important here as well. To make each of these components, and we are going to make them all separate, I'm gonna begin with the wheel. I think that's gonna be the easiest thing to make. So it's obviously a cylinder. I'm going to go into my side view and I'm going to create a cylinder around the right size. And we need to figure out how many segments this is going to have all the way around. Now, there are three spokes and there are also three holes. 
So that gives me a multiple of three. Three is not enough. That's going to make a triangle. Um, six is not enough. Nine is not enough. And if I actually take a look at this here, if I kind of look at the way that it's built, I can see that the holes are twice as wide as the spokes are. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to make it so that for every one unit for spoke, I get two units of uh, hole. And so that's going to work things out. I don't need all of these edges along its height, so we'll get rid of those right out of the gate. In the front view, we're going to go line this up. Now I'm going to put symmetry on the wheel here as well. So we can use the center edge to line up with about where that wheel is, like so. And then we can adjust the height here to be a half height. So instead of trying to match the full width of the wheel, we'll just match the height. So I'll convert this to an editable poly since we're now ready to start manipulating it. And we're going to go with Q. That's my selection tool. And I'm going to just marquee in the middle here. And I'm going to hit F2. Now, F2 is going to alter my selection so that I don't see that red, but it is still selected. And that's just so that I can see these holes a little bit better when I do my insetting. So with inset, I'll bring this out to match the outer edge of the hole. I'm going to need another inset, so we're going to hit plus, And we'll drag this out to match the inner sides of the hole. And then I'm going to do it again just to create the axle. And I'm just going to kind of guess here at about the size of the axle. I think something like that is going to work. And I'm going to hit OK. And because I did this to both the middle and the outside edge of the wheel here, I'm going to have a little bit of an easier time selecting faces. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select through the wheel like this. And when I hit bridge, it's going to bridge them across so that we end up getting a hole like this. Now, I've got to be careful with the numbers here when I do this. I can see that if I go three by three by three, that's not going to equal the same uh, distance here that we have. And so I got to go and kind of figure out exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here. Now, I did work out that it was supposed to be um, uh, two to one. And so if I go four and one, you can see that it doesn't give me the right numbers in, in this. And so we're going to go back up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do four. And then if we go all the way around here, it's six and six and six. This is an 18 sided cylinder. So what we can do is we can actually go and do this with four. So we'll do uh, two. There's 18 here. So let's go two and two. Like so. And then we'll bridge. That's six. Yeah, no, that's going to work. I'm going to have two for the middle. And then that, and then that, and then that. Yeah, that works. Okay, I'm doing my math here correct. So I'm going to get four, and I'm going to bridge, and we're going to leave two, and then we'll do four, and we'll bridge, and we'll leave two, and we'll four, and bridge. So that's going to create the holes for me, and also create the spokes automatically. So that kind of gives us the, the bulk of the shape of the wheel here, uh, kind of in one fell swoop. So now the next thing that we have to do is kind of set up the shape a little bit better. So it's still kind of wrong here. So let's grab this outer edge. I'm going to apply chamfer to make it look slightly rounded. I'm not actually trying to make this round. I just want to kind of give it the impression of being rounded. I'm thinking kind of a uh, shopping cart wheel type thing. So that's going to work like that. Uh, and then I'm going to grab this center piece and I'm going to move this in. So I'll give us, again, something a little bit more interesting when it comes to the shape of the, uh, the center. Let's see, then we'll grab the axle here. We'll extrude that and we'll bring it out. This is going to be way too big. So let's go to the front and bring this back in. And again, I'll just kind of line it up with where that axle ends like that. I can see that it's also chamfered. So maybe I'll hold shift, select edges and add a chamfer. So we'll go and put this in. Uh, that Sure, that'll work. And then we want to get rid of this end gone here. So I'm going to grab it, do an inset. Again, the size doesn't matter, and then collapse. So there, that's kind of half the wheel. Now if I select the face on the inner half, we can use that as the mirror point. So I'll go into my modifiers, select symmetry, and it looks like Z is going to work here in this case. So that's pretty good. We're going to convert this to an editable poly. And the mirror left behind some unwanted edges. So let's go clean those up. It's going to be inside the center of each gap, like so. And then along the center of the wheel here. We can't have any of these edges. So control 
uh, and hit remove and they're going to be gone and that wheel looks pretty honky dory so we're going to call that wheel done and we can now move on to the next area so the next area is going to be kind of the box assembly that goes up here along with the fork so let's see in my side view I think the easiest way to create this is going to be using um, probably a plane. Let's go up here, create a plane, and I'll just kind of place it roughly where I think it goes, somewhere about here. And I'm trying to make sure that it's at least taller than the wheel so that the wheel can go through it. Um, something like that. And I want to make sure the bottom at least goes further down than the axle so the axle can actually go through this thing as well. So let's convert this to an editable poly. Uh, we're going to add another segment here so that I can bend this back. Let's see. Let's move this up. So we have a uh, a frontward segment. Let's see if we can see this from the front. Uh, it might be a little bit easier to see where that is in the front. So we'll go to the front view. We'll move it over so it lines up with the wheel. Somewhere about here. So I'm actually going to line it up with that. Let's go uh, into our vertex mode here again. And we'll see if we can't see where that edge is. Yeah, we can't really see it in the front, so we'll put it about here, I think. Um, and then this has to move back. Uh, I think it's actually just the bottom it needs to move back. So there, something like that. That's going to give us that angled slope. Um, now, there's a problem here, and that's that because it's now angled, it's not as wide as the axle. So I'm going to have to select the vertices at the back and drag them back until the axle fits within. Maybe something like that. I can do the front too. Just move them forward until again that axle fits where it's supposed to. Okay, now we're going to get rid of some of the sharp edges on this thing. So we'll start by grabbing the uh, let's see, let's do the vertices in the uh, let's do the back first. So we're going to do a chamfer here, and this is going to round the uh, the vertex off. So we'll bring it up here so it's a little bit more rounded. I'm going to add another segment here so it gets a little closer to round. I don't like having something so low res near uh, an 18 sided cylinder like we've got in the axle. So we'll bring this up a little bit. It's not too bad like that. Uh, and then we'll select the front one too. We're not going to need as many uh, segments, uh, chamfer. And we're not going to need as many segments in the chamfer here as we did in the rear. So we'll go and bring that down. That's not enough. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to weld those two in the center together. So let's hit OK. I'll grab these two center ones and collapse them. And there, that kind of reads okay. It's it's still kind of uh, within range here. So we're going to go and connect these edges to get rid of this end gone that we've created. There we go. So that is now uh, all clean geometry. We've only got quads and a try here at the end. So, so far so good. We need now need to make this go around the wheel. So the way that we're going to do that, we're going to grab the top edge. And I need to control shift, control shift, drag it in there we go to make an extrusion now i need to set this up with the center of the wheel as well again we're going to use symmetry here to copy this over uh and in order to do that i need to know where the middle of the wheel is so if i go to the wheel and i just copy its position and then go back to our plane and put that edge at the same place that is now lined up with the center of the wheel so that's going to make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to now making the other side of this thing so with that edge selected, we'll go down, find our symmetry, and there we go. Just like that, it made the other side. Now, typically, uh, when you see geometry in a game engine, uh, polygons are single-sided. Let's get rid of this edge. So polygons are single-sided, which means their, their inside or their back face does not render. Um, now, if I try to do a render here in 3ds Max, 3ds Max has got a renderer that will show us that polygon. I'll cancel this out and cancel this out. Um, but in a game engine, that'll actually disappear. So we need to give this object here some thickness. I'm going to use a modifier to do that called shell. So I'm going to go and turn on shell. Now there's the outer shell. It's a little bigger than we need. So we'll bring that down. And actually, I'm going to use the inner shell instead, I think, here. We're going to bring that up. And that'll create an inner shell. So I want to get the thickness about right. And say something like that. And I'm going to turn on the straight and corners here too to make sure that it doesn't mess up any of my angles. And yeah, that looks pretty decent. We can convert this to an editable poly and call that fork now done. All right, that leaves us with only a couple of segments here that we need to model for the wheel assembly. We got to make the uh, the box and then the cylinder. So these are going to be easier done in the top view. Uh, I'll go into my top view. Let's create a cylinder right here. That's going to be 
the point at which this thing rotates and so we'll put a cylinder in here um, it's gonna be too high in the side so we'll bring this down this is a smaller cylinder so it doesn't need to have the same resolution as some of the larger ones now we're gonna go and move this up and I'm gonna just barely put it inside the uh, the other mesh here uh, and with that done we can go and bring the height down until it's about where we want it to go yeah something like that convert this to an editable poly beautiful and then we're going to select the whole thing remove the middle and delete the caps okay so this is the top and bottom here that we can't actually see since they're inside geometry they're not going to be seen if they're not seen then they're not needed which means delete them and so we'll get rid of that and beautiful that piece is now done we'll create our box again i'm just going to kind of roughly line this up with where it goes and then we can use move to go and seat it inside of the dumpster body again just as little as possible I'll line up the front, convert it to an editable poly, and then just go manipulate my vertices here until it kind of matches the silhouette. So an angle at the back, an angle at the front, and then we'll go take a look at this from the front here. And again, a little wider at top, a little narrower at the bottom. That's the same thing here. That one's probably okay. We'll move this one in. Yeah, all right, that works. And I can convert this to an editable poly now that it's done. And now that the entire wheel assembly is done, we can actually go to the attach button, select the cylinder, select the fork, and select the wheel. And we now have an entire wheel assembly. So cool, that's one quarter of the wheels. And we can go now to the side view, and we can hold shift and drag a copy to the back, which will make the rear wheels. I'm not using symmetry here because they both face the same direction. I'm gonna make sure we're on copy, and that'll work. And then we're going to attach the two together so that, again, we have a singular wheel assembly. Now, in order to mirror them again, we're going to go to Hierarchy Panel, Effect Pivot, and we'll go and zero this out. We can now go back to our Modifier Panel, throw our Symmetry Modifier back on, like so. And then just make sure that our axis is correct, and that's going to create the other two wheels. Convert to Editable Poly, and we're done with the wheels. All right, so we've got the box, the handle, and the wheels. We've now only got uh, just a couple more things to do. We've got the lid assembly, which is also going to include the axle and the little bracket here that holds the whole thing together. So it's three components out of this next component. Um, so I'm going to start with the lid. And the lid, I'm going to do, let's see, we'll do this in the top view. Uh, I'm just going to kind of line this up a little bit here, and I can kind of see my edge work this way. So I'm going to create a plane kind of inside that view, make it take about half the dumpster. We'll go to the front view. We're going to have to move it up since it's way too low. We'll kind of line it up here with the top of the uh, top of the dumpster a little bit like that. And then um, we'll move it to the inside a little bit more. We're going to line up the left side with that gap and we can line up the uh, the inside and convert this to an edible poly, grab our vertices and line this up with the gap in the center here too. That's the gap between the lids. Okay, so this is perfectly horizontal and the lid is on a diagonal, but since the lid when rotated will be horizontal, that means that I can actually model it this way, which will be easier and then we can rotate it into place. So we'll kind of move it down a little bit here so it lines up a little bit better. And then the thing that we want to do is we want to go and add these little bevels that exist. So there's two kind of bevels in the front. We look from the from the front, we can actually see that there are three across the side. So I'm going to go into my edge mode here, and I'm going to go and create an edge. We'll go to connect, and we'll go to our undo connect settings. We'll give one edge for each of the bevels. And then if I go to vertex mode so I can actually see this, I'll try and center this edge in each bevel. So that one's going to go about there. That one's probably good in the middle. We'll move this one to the outside a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer these to create the bevels. This is going to try and keep them about the same size. So we'll go to chamfer and we'll reduce the value and bring the amount up. Something like that. And it's not going to be exact, but uh, it'll line up pretty close. So we'll just move these, just shift them a little bit. That one's probably fine. That one's going to come out. And this one's going to come out. And this one to the left. And uh, that one's probably good where that is there. Okay, so we've now got enough polygons to do this properly from the front. We're going to do the same thing from the sides. So I'm going to select all of the edges. 
and we're going to need to add four connections here. So these are going to go this way. We need one for this edge, one for this edge, one for this edge, and one for this edge. So that's four. So we'll put that in here and hit OK. And then using the vertices, we can go and line these up. So this goes to the rear. This goes to the rear, not nearly as much. And then this one's going to go frontwards to line up with that one. And this one's going to go frontwards to line up there. Okay, so now I have enough geometry here to go and make these extrusions. Now the lid is actually symmetrical, so I'm going to start going symmetrically as I create this. So we're going to go into polygon mode and we're going to start extruding these extrusions. So one, two, three. No, oh, undo. One, two, three. And I won't worry about the center one because we'll mirror this. So we're going to go extrude and we'll kind of uh, view this from the side here to get that thickness correct. Let's go over here. So we'll just kind of, yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to hit the, uh, so there's that thickness right there. That's what I want. And the idea here is that I'm going to hit the OK and then remove the front and back and extrude again the same height. And that's going to give us the next extrusion. Then using vertices, we can add the uh, the slope that's supposed to be here. So I'm going to pull that one forward, pull that one back. We'll grab this and pull it back just a little. And we'll do the same thing in the rear here. We'll pull these back and forward, rather, like that. And if we go take a look at this thing now... We've got uh, just a couple of these things built. Now, the reason I'm doing symmetry here is that there's a lot of wasted topology that needs to be cleaned. And so I'm going to clean half of this thing and put symmetry on. So let's start by collapsing these two verts into a single point. And then we'll do the same thing at the rear. Find the same ones and collapse them. And then we can go and find the edges that aren't contributing to the shape and we'll target weld them. So this one forward and its counterpart forward. We'll go over to the other side and forward and forward and forward and then to the outside. So that's nice and clean. There we go. We'll go do uh, the same thing at the back here. So forward and then forward and forward and then to the center. And then these guys forward here. And now every vertex on this, at least in these two shapes here, is now contributing to the shape of this model. So if I select this center edge or face and go to symmetry, we can go and choose the right axes. And I, I really want to make sure when I'm doing this that I'm getting the clean shape here. So if you find you're getting the wrong shape, try using this little flip button back and forth to make sure you are getting the, the right side copied to the right side. And so that appears to be what I'm getting here. So with that done, we can go and accept our changes here. We're going to convert this to an edible poly. And we need to go and add some thickness to this because um, it's just a plane and again it's not going to render correctly now typically these things are actually extruded plastic and we would get these holes on the inside here too but being a low poly mesh we're going to want to save some polygon count here so let's first um let's we're going to grab this perimeter and drag it down uh to create some thickness let's get rid of the symmetry line i forgot about that so control backspace to get rid of that we're going to grab our borders and i'm just going to hold shift and drag this down a little bit and that's going to create some thickness. And then I just want to clean up some of the vertices here. So this edge, if we collapse it, we'll pinch it into a triangle. And the same thing at the back. Can't really see it here, but that is that. Um, and then what I can do is I can go to uh, these two faces here, these two edges rather, and these two edges, and I'm just going to bridge them. They're going to go straight across the bottom. So bridge. And now if we look at this thing from underneath, it's got two nice big flat polygons there and then all of the bevels on top. So this will save us a little bit of performance since we're not going to really see inside the dumpster all that often. With that done, uh, we can start working on the axle here. I'm going to make this out of a cylinder. So we'll go and click and drag it here. Uh, now I'm going to want to actually make sure that we're changing the, uh, the size of the cylinder here. We're going to create something a lot lower res. Let's make an eight-sided cylinder. I think that'll work quite nicely. Again, this is a smaller detail, so a lower number of uh, polygons is going to make sense. So we'll go and select that. Now, that because this was created in the side view, that does line up with zero already. I'm just going to go in and adjust the radius so it matches the silhouette here of that axle. Uh, and then we'll grab the height and we'll just zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to grab the height by the slider and drag it um, to make it... Well, drag it to make it taller and we zoom out here we can see this is actually working there it goes and we'll bring this out to the end where this flange begins so we'll convert this to an edible poly we'll grab our vertices and we'll actually manually move them to the flange to create the flange we're going to do a series of bevels here so i'm going to select just those polygons and remove the rest and then we can start beveling so we'll go to bevel 
and I'm going to create, let's minimize these. We're going to create the height first and then add the offset in order to make it match. I will accept and continue beveling. This time we're going to get rid of the offset and just increase the height. And then I'm going to create a third one. You're not going to be able to see this too well here, but I'm going to create a third one where we get rid of the height and give it an offset. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us the inset we need for our end gone cleanup. So we just get collapse and that's nice and clean. So there, now there, now we have that flange. I can select the face at the center. This is the absolute middle and we'll go to modifiers, symmetry, and there we go. That'll create the other side. So convert to edible poly, that'll be good to go. We can now use this as a means of creating the little bracket that goes there. So if I go to polygons and I select the cylinder here, just this half, I'm going to use control, shift, and scale. So control, shift, scale, and bring it in. And as soon as I let go, it's going to ask me if I want to clone this. And I do. I want to make a new object. And then we got to select that object. We still have our axle selected here. So I'll select both and deselect the flange. So there we go. I'll just go and scale this thing down a little bit and get it closer to the shape I want. Bring it to where it goes. And this is going to be a little tough to see because they're exactly the same size. But I just need to line it up here with where that goes. So I can see these vertices here will come out. And these ones will go out and there. We've got about the right size now. So we can go to polygon mode, select everything, and we'll extrude. So we want to extrude on local normal here. So that's by group. We'll go to local normal. And we'll, that didn't seem to do what I wanted at all. Let's go back and local normal. So it looks like local normal is broken here. Let's try this again. There's by polygon. And now local normal is working. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, we'll just make this the right height. So we'll bring it, uh, I don't know, thereabouts. And then I'll hit OK. And then what I'm going to do to create the bottom of this is I'm going to deselect the top half of polygons. So now I only have the, the polygons that make up the bottom of this disk. And I'm going to extrude them again. But this time, we're going to change our extrusion to be by group so they stay together. And I'll say, okay, the height doesn't matter here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge them or whoops, move them down like this. And then uh, I'll use scale to flatten them out. So we'll switch over to scale and we'll scale until they're pretty flat. Uh, we can also use the, uh, the make planar button here, but I want to just push this inside the dumpster so we can't see it. And if you can't see it, you don't need it. So we'll delete it. And I don't need this edge either, as this is a remnant from when this thing was cylindrical. So we'll control backspace, remove that. Uh, and then we have some vertices here that aren't being used. So uh, we can go and start welding these vertices uh, away. Now you gotta be careful how you do this here. I'm gonna show you, this is gonna kind of break things. So I'm gonna just collapse these edges. And then if I target weld these over, so this guy at the back and this guy in the front, you're gonna see that this creates a polygon here that's an end gone. So even though it looks like I'm cleaning, um, if we look at this here, there's an end gone and it's actually got a concave corner, which is pretty bad. We don't want to have that. So you got to be careful when you clean that you're not actually doing more harm. So I'm going to connect that like that and make a quad. We'll remove this edge and I'm going to go clean this symmetrically here. So we'll add another triangle this way. And there we go. That just looks a little bit cleaner to me. So we've got some geometry here now that's now a little bit more usable. We also want to bridge the center to make sure that there's polygons in there like that. All right, so we've now got our little bracket here. We need to make a clone on the other side. So I'm going to affect its pivot and we are gonna go and zero it in X. And then by just exiting, uh, let's do the same thing with the lid here. We're gonna have to make another lid too. So by just exiting back into the modifier panel, that'll do what we want. We can grab our symmetry. Uh, this should be an X like so. That'll make the other lid. And then we'll grab the bracket and put symmetry. You notice I didn't collapse anything here. We're going to do this all at once. So that'll make the other side here. That looks good like that. Um, and then that looks like it's everything modeled together here now. Uh, there's some cleanup we're going to have to do. There's a few things. It looks like the lid is offset here. So there's a weird, there's a weird gap going on. Let's convert everything to editable poly. That'll get rid of the modifiers on everything. And we can now go and adjust this lid here to try and make this uh, line up with the axle a little bit more. So this, this can often happen. We'll get rid of this center line here too from the symmetry. So control backspace to remove. 
and then we'll get out of edge we'll select our lid and so yeah so if you look at this here you can see that it's misaligned the lid should be up a little bit more and actually go through the axle the axle a little bit or at least be connected to it in some way and then I'm gonna select the axle and I'm gonna to go to attach and I'm gonna attach the lid now, this is going to make the whole thing use one pivot, which is going to allow me to open and close the lid. So I can kind of angle it down a little bit more. I still have my angle snaps on, so I can't get it exact. Um, and if we look at this from the side, it's a little shorter than what was expected. So I'm going to turn off my angle snaps, and I'll just kind of get this a little bit closer. There's something like that. And then using polygon mode, we're going to select the front and deselect the sides. And I need to switch my axes for my move tool. So we're going to do this up in the little menu up here. And we're going to drop down and go to local. So it's going to move my axes to line up with the polygon. So I can just move them straight out. And that should be good. It's a little higher than we want at the back. But I think it'll work. And so yeah, if we go look at this now. I think that is just about everything we need to do. Uh, there's a little bit of cleanup work here, a little bit of tidying we're going to have to do as well. Let's grab the dumpster body and we'll attach the handles, the wheel assemblies, and probably the bracket. This is going to uh, leave us with two objects, the lid and the body that make up the whole dumpster. We're going to go name these, so we'll call this dumpster body. And now we can grab this and we'll uh, try and type... That's not right. There we go. Dumpster. Uh, we'll call this dumpster lid. And yep, that should work. Uh, we can go and select our image planes now and delete them since they're no longer needed. And that looks like it. That's now the completed dumpster. So we can go in, uh, save our file, and uh, and now we're probably pretty good to go.